Ah, yeah. So before I get into this pedal board rundown, I just want to make this this quick disclaimer that this may be obvious to some people, but I don't want people to watch this video and think that they have to buy all of these pedals or do all of this stuff that I'm doing in order to make noise. Noise is about what you interpret it as. I've seen some incredible sets by people using multitudes of pedals. As much as I've seen one person plugging a microphone into an amplifier, making that feedback and still doing an incredible set. This is all about just giving people an insight on my creative process, maybe inspiring some people to try some different stuff. But none of this is you have to do this to make noise. Anyway, enough of that. Now let's get into the pedal board. Okay, so this is my board. As I said, people could probably find this to be quite intimidating when they first look at it. But hopefully when I break it down and kind of give the uh, general rundown of how I've gone through this, maybe people will be like, oh, actually, this isn't so bad. Or maybe people will still find it confusing. Who knows? But anyway, so the way that I've gone about creating this board is I'm very much this sort of person that really wants to be able to create lots of different type of noises whenever I really want to. I love the way that people make minimalistic noise with very simple, small pedals, and I've tried to do that myself. And I love people that do it, but for me creatively, personally, what I love is having a big kind of space I can utilize lots of different sounds and experiment with different ideas in one big thing. So I don't have to plug things in, reroute stuff. I still do redo this board quite frequently. Like the way that this is set up now is set up more for this grind sort of sound I'm doing on the tour with seven year coming up. So there may be some things I would change around, like what if I'm doing just a pure noise set, but in terms of the general setup, it usually stays the same. So the main thing that runs all of this will be the mixer. So the mixer is the way that I'm able to control these different noises. And what I've essentially done is I've separated it out into three sections, if you can imagine it. So what we have going on here on the very right of me here, I've got this amazing semi-modular synth by Create Audio. It's called the West Pest. It's a really nasty bass synth. It's not, I wouldn't say for like probably modular synth people, they would probably find this to be quite underwhelming because it's limited in what it does. But for what I want to use it for, I love it. So I have this then running into the Digitech death metal pedal, which if you know noise or know how this pedal sounds, you know, like Merzbo use it, loads of like noises use it. It's a very, it's a very um, iconic sound, especially if you scoop the uh, mids completely, you get that real like wall of noise sound. But also there's the great thing about this pedal is you don't have to necessarily get this one. There are clones of it everywhere. So Yats then running into a Lone Wolf Audio Left Hand Wrath, which is a Boss HM2. It's basically, it's all Japanese components, and it's been souped up to the nines. It's got a presence control on it. There's more different gain controls. There's also a different um, fuzz circuit in there I can switch between. I always have it just on the pure Swedish HM2 mode because I love that sound. And that is then running into possibly... One of the most underrated and cheapest pedals that I would suggest anyone could get into if they ever wanted to make noise, which is the Behringer Super Fuzz. This thing is, you can still get it for maybe secondhand, like 40 quid, 20 quid if you're really lucky. And it's just a, the, the Electric Wizard album, Dope Throne, the, the guitar tone is basically this pedal. Um, so what I have it doing is, this, these two are just gain stage distortions, and then I have this is boosting the whole signal with its third boost function. So the other nice thing I've got with the death metal that I forgot to mention is that it has two outputs. So one output is going through the HM2 into the, into the super fuzz, and then I've got also just the synth going into the death metal going out into its own channel as well. So what I get with that is... Um, I'll do a sound of like how the synth sounds without the pedals first. So the pet, the synth itself. Very cool 
synth makes some really interesting sounds. You can like have a whole function on it as well. And then turn it down a wee bit. When I then engage, I get this. And I get that really like disgusting, those bassy synth noises that I want. And this synth is uh, very, very intuitive in terms of if you want to like keep a sound droning, but you want to change how it sounds in that with the resonance aspects of the folding. I'm not a synth person very much, I'm much more of a pedal person, so I don't really know a lot of how this kind of works, but I just mess around with it and it sounds good. So this is my, like, what you call my bass section of my noise. So when I just want to have that borderlining distorted sub drop wall of just crunchy bassy noise. That, that's the sound of the death metal on its own. And then this is the sound with the three. So I can blend the two together. So that's the first aspect of my pedal board that I kind of, that's, this is probably the one that stayed mostly the same since I discovered it because that sound is exactly kind of what I want. Uh, it was when I really when I added the death metal in that it kind of added that new dimension that I really wanted. I'll just turn these off because they're still coming through on here. So the other more important side is the high noise. So the beautiful thing about these mixers and what you can get with some of these mixers is it has, you can send the uh, auxiliary effects. It's got a jack output on them and then they have, the idea is you're meant to have them as a return. So if you wanted to have like delay and reverb, you could run them through this, put your vocals or whatever through the reverb and it comes out and it sounds all nice. The beautiful thing of doing it for noise is you can make a feedback loop. So all I have is the effects send is then going into this side of this pedal chain, which I'll get into a, into a second, which generates a, a feedback loop, which will start making stuff react very strangely. But the beautiful thing about it is that if I don't want to use the sound just on its own, I can say, for example, get my bass sound going. But if I want to add some more low end, I could I can have it go through the effects loop, which is going into these pedals. And then I can give it a more higher noisy quality and make a really interesting wall. But then what I can also do is get rid of them completely. And the high noise will become an instrument by itself. So the way that this side works is the effect send is sent into a very old pedal now. It's called the Truly Beautiful Disaster by... De well, they were called Devi Ever, but I believe they're now called Death by Audio Effects, but you have to, I will fact-check that. Um, and this is basically a feedback loop of pedal itself. So what I'm able to do is send a feedback loop into a feedback loop. So before getting into how that works, that is then going into the Zvex machine, which if you don't know who Zvex are, they're a crazy pedal company that make very kooky pedals. This pedal's kind of designed to be a, like a high pitch treble boost when you want to play lead guitar, but you're playing through like a really big muffy fuzz and it just injects all that high end in. But when I've used it with noise, it just gets that high, horrible shit that I want. Like, this is just me fessing with this.
That's then going into this pedal, which is um, a pedal that was made for me by somebody. Uh, I've called it the Miss Squeal. What it essentially is, is it's two pedals that this guy that I used to know made that it was, he deliberately kind of wired it backwards or in a weird way. So it kind of glitches out and doesn't work properly, but it's just a really horrible, treadily clean boost, which again is just perfect for what I want. For what I want these sort of really high sounds. that's with it off that's with it on the difference it makes so then going back to this feedback looper what i have then is from the effect send and return that this feedback looper has i've got it going to a black box audio pedal which is essentially just a really nasty broken fuzz which with this pedal the truly beautiful disaster it has one of those light sensors on it so i can control how much of this is sent through the signal of this so watch my hand and again and what i'd like to do is i'll fine tune it and then put something like a plectrum on kind of have it half on so it kind of glitches out. And I can still put my hand over it if I want to have a bit more of a... Yeah. The other thing that's great with this side, if I want to get the... the good old feedbacking, noisy, trebly... Um, contact mic is I can have I have this running into its own channel which I can then send to all these pedals so if I s have it so the feedback isn't sending through here now here's a contact mic on its own pretty bog standard but if I have it running through here And I can get it to feedback like a little, like a nasty little sausage that it is. And all this in the eye will still be affected. And it sounds great when I put it in my mouth. You can say any, I mean, this is just the noise set by itself, you know? <laughs> So yeah. Wow. so yeah, so that's that side, basically. Um, sorry, I had to do a cut there because my phone decided to gack out. Um, so yeah, we've done the low noises, we've done the high noises. Now we come to these two. So what I've got here is a Chaos Pad. I think it's the Chaos Pad 2. I was thinking about getting one of the newer ones, but this one was cheaper and it's made of mostly like a really strong like plastic and metal. So I was kind of more in the idea of using this one. And some of the sounds, to be honest, haven't aged that badly. Like this synth sound is... It sounds cool, but if I obviously send it through my noisy high feedback loop, the qualities I can get with it are really cool. The great thing about a chaos pad, I can also leave this going on if I want to have a drone going with this. But not only is it a synth, but you can also have things running directly into the chaos pad and then have effects running through that. Like it has filters, modulators, delays, reverb, and then you can get in synths. There's a drum on, drum machines on there. There's vocoders on there. So... If you're wanting to get something with lots of effects on it, which you can intuitively move around with your finger, not having to really know anything about all the knobs and stuff, you can still find these on like Facebook Marketplace or eBay for like under two hundred pounds. Sometimes you can get really lucky with like a first gen one, which are still limited, but for if you have nothing, it's a great entry level, which you could probably get for like a hundred. 
if you're lucky. Um, so what I have running into that is this very kooky cassette player that was very nicely given to me by a good friend, uh, the owner and runner of Eggy Tapes, uh, Big Up Craig. So this tape, this tape uh, player is meant to have a noise gate on it, but for some reason, the noise gate makes it do this. Which is amazing. So that in itself is a synth, because I can run it through this, and it gets a weird, like, stuttery, horrible noise. But then also the beauty of it is, if I want to use it just on its, on its own as a tape player, I can do that. And obviously, like, cassette players, for anyone making noise, is a great source for if you want to have weird samples. You found a kooky old cassette tape by somebody, like, I have this gospel greats tape just sitting here if i wanted to just loop some weird old gospel music the thing i've started getting into recently which was actually from i was watching a youtuber called cadicorus um reviewing a commodore 64 and obviously the commodore 64 well if anyone doesn't know what this old console was the games were made on cassette tapes and he makes this funny gag in the video about how oh it's a cassette tape so you can put it in your stereo and he put it in and it made this horrible horrible noise which obviously i heard that and went my god i i need to try this out this sounds amazing to my ears and i've finally been able to get hold of some commodore 64 tapes so this is how the cassette tape this is there's no effects nothing no noise whatever this is how the cassette tape of uh, Commodore 64 sounds. <laughs> it's great. It's so high pitched and horrible. Like, oh my God. So abrasive. But then the beauty, of course, is I can have that going. I can run effects through it with this chaos pad. Like this chaos pad itself has a fuzz on it. It's also got delays, filters. Let's have that delay going on there. Like that's, this sounds great already. And then I can have it running through my high noise. Maybe bring in some more of the feedback itself, give it a bit more of a glitchiness to it. Yeah. So that's pretty much how my board kind of works. It's there's the bass synth, bass sound, there's a high high noise sound, and then the kind of kooky, weird samples, noisy, other synthy bits that I can add in there to just give it some spice and flavor. Um, yeah, I guess that's everything pretty much. So I hope you enjoyed watching this, and I hope some people at least found it interesting, and I'd be amazing if some people found it inspiring. But, you know, I just hope everyone enjoyed it regardless. So, yeah, I am on tour with Seven Year Waiting List. Uh, coming up this week. Um, we'll throw up all of the dates here. Ha, wah, 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 wah. Oh, amazing. Yes. Queer noise. Hell yeah. Um, love you all. Thank you for watching. You're the best. Mwah.